Hello guys, how you doing? I hope you're well. Today we're gonna make a diner a scene lighting breakdown. We're gonna complicate it a little bit though. So we are using a no traditional space. We're using a dining space in a corner and the room is completely with white wall. So it's gonna be bouncing the lights everywhere. So it's gonna, we will have to dominate the light really well in order to achieve the results that we want. I'm gonna be using my two non lights Forza 60, the Forza 60B as my backlight and the Forza 60 daylight as my main light, my key light. And I'm gonna be using the umbrella, the 100 centimeter umbrella. So I'm using today the Blackmagic 6K Pro and I'm using a 50 millimeter lens in full frame uh, here because it's a uh, super 35 because of 75. But then as soon as I put it up, I realized that because all my walls in this space are white, the walls that I have are all of them are white, the light, it was bouncing too much. So the, the scene was very flat and I didn't want that. I really wanted a little bit more moody. I wanted to control really well the light. And obviously I didn't want to see the light on it. So I use a top light, I change it to a Fossa 60. And as you can see, it was affecting the whole room. And I didn't like it, especially because all the walls are white. So I was, it was bouncing everywhere. So I needed to use a bigger source or a saw, a modifier that I can control more. So that's what I brought my 60 centimeters soft box and I put a grid on it. So it will only affect my face in the front side and the table so you want everything else will be black as you can see now so now you can see that it's only affecting my face bouncing to the table back towards my face so it lit up but the room is still dark so what we need to do now is we need to give me some backlight so that's what we're going to do now so with the force of 60b that will look like the Forza 60V as a backlight with the Fresno. So as I mentioned that day on the shoot when I was recording, I was using my Forza 60B as my backlight, but I forgot to mention that I was using the Fresno with the band doors, so I could control a little bit better um, where my light was hitting. So I didn't want to touch as much the walls that I had in front. I wanted to be very directional and only hit my back and what was my back of my head. That's the only part that I wanted to affect in this shot. Now I'm gonna show you how it will look like once I turn it off each light on and we will the result with no light, with only my back light, my key light, and then how it will be bouncing everywhere. This is how it will look like no light. And then this is how it will look like with the back light only. And this is how it will look like when we add the key light. So the key light, 60 centimeter soft box with a grid bouncing from the table, white table to my face, back light here, separating me from the background, which is a little bit dark. Then for my close-up, what did I do? So my key light and my back light were about 40% and 60%. Then what I did was, because I was using for the close-up of the wine when I was pouring it into the glass, uh, it was 120 frames per second, so I would lose a lot of light in there. So what I did was I increased the power of my key light and a little bit of the backlight. So the key light was fully 100% and my backlight was around 75 to 80%. So that way I could achieve a similar exposure that what I have before. Then for my medium show, which was the last shot that I did, um, I wanted to see myself the transition on grabbing the wine and drinking it. So, but for that occasion, because my son was coming from behind, I will see it on the shot. So then what I did was I turned my key light, I put it in front of me, sort of like 90 degrees. So the light will affect very similar to what I had before and always keeping my shadow side close to the camera. So when, as you can see in my first shot, my right side, it was close to the camera and then the close up, you don't see my face. And then in my medium shot, which is the third last shot, my shadow was again on my right side, which was close to the camera. 
and for that I dimmed down again the light to about 45% because it was very close to my face. I wanted to be very soft and similar to what I had at the beginning. Would I add any other shots to keep more dynamic and the viewer attention? Yes, definitely I would. But considering that I was recording by myself, I wanted to keep it very simple, um, only three shots and to show a wide angle, a medium shot and a close up as well. Um, you know, keeping it very simple in that sense. The, the challenge that I wanted to put to myself on that day for this dinner table is in the occasion that you are in a Airbnb and you need to record a dining uh, clips for your commercial and you don't have much space and you cannot move the dining tables and you have these white walls. One, uh, this is one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is a better way, it's by covering the white walls if you don't want to be in bounce in, if you don't want that light to bounce back to you and just with a black blanket that will do a lot to it, it will be better. But because I didn't have the equipment at that time, I wanted to use what I had and you know and be a little bit of a little bit creative with it. So yeah these shots that I got and now I'm gonna show you the three shots that I did that day for this dining scene. But before that don't forget to give it a like if you enjoyed this content and subscribe if you want to see more about lighting breakdown, DaVinci Resolve tips, tips and tricks and anything related to cinematography that you're enjoying to watch. Now I'm gonna show you the video and I hope you enjoy it. And let me know in the comments if you will do something differently, if you will add up any other shots. See you next time, guys.